Many of you may be ready to place an order for some green coffee beans to roast at home. I know that in the next few weeks, I plan on placing an order, but before I do that, I want to do some research and I want to find the perfect coffee for me to roast at home. And I'm going to share with you how I do that, so stick around. All right, thanks for joining me today and welcome to the Virtual Coffee Lab. So in the next few weeks, I do plan on ordering more coffee to roast here at home. I'm excited about that, but I need to do some planning and some thinking and some research, and I thought I would share that process with you. So this may be something you're already doing, but for a lot of new home coffee roasters, they are just looking for places to buy green beans. They're listening to people on the internet. They're listening to people like me. I mean, that's, that's how we learn, right? Uh, we do our reading, our research, we read books. Uh, but ultimately, um, there's information that's presented about the coffee we're ordering, and that's what I want to focus on. So I'll get to that in just a second, but first let me just share that if you are ordering coffee uh, that's already blended together, or if you're ordering coffee that is just labeled as a Colombian coffee or a Kenyan coffee with no other information, I would steer away from those types of coffees because you really don't know much about where that coffee came from. And I would probably say that it's probably not a super high grade coffee. If you're looking for a good quality coffee, you want to buy a single origin coffee and you want to learn about the farm or the region that that coffee came from. So first thing is first, you want to know about the, the farm or the co-op where your coffee came from. And that's going to tell you so many things. That's going to tell you the altitude that the coffee was grown, the soil conditions, the climate uh, with the temperatures, the density of the bean is going to be uh, influenced by all of that and the processing, how the coffee is processed. So you want to learn about all of these things because they're going to make a huge difference in the type of coffee that you can expect when you bring it home and you roast it. So let's talk about that for a second. If you're interested in a coffee that is earthy, then you're going to want to look for coffees that maybe don't have uh, the high altitude and the high density. You may be a lower altitude, lower density coffee, something that's more chocolatey. If you're looking for something that's a little more acidic and more fruity, then a, maybe a higher density coffee is what you're looking for. So how do you know the difference between a low density and a high density? One way is to, um, as you're reading and doing your research, is to look at the altitude. So generally coffee is grown between 3,000 and 6 or 7,000 feet. So the 3,000 foot elevation is a lower density coffee, generally speaking. And you're going to have those earthy tones and the chocolates and things like that. The higher density coffees, because they're grown at that altitude, the plant grows at a slower pace. At night it cools down, there's more moisture, and so the plant grows slower the seed is more dense because of this, because of the temperatures and this slow growth process. And so when you get your coffee and you're looking at it, you're gonna see where the crack is on that seed, you should see a tighter line that's on that seed and that will kind of let you know that this is more than likely a higher density coffee. So whether you want a low density coffee or high density coffee, that is one element. The processing is another. So you may want a coffee that's washed. You may like a, um, a dried process coffee, one where the cherry is left on the seed uh, and is not depulped, it is not broken off and, and processed uh, for days before that process takes place. So that when you receive your bean, there's a little bit of that fruit mucilix left on the on the bean. You may like that type. That's going to have an influence on in how you roast your coffee and again we'll get to the roasting element of that in just a minute. So you got the processing, you got all of the details about the farm. The next element of knowing about the farm is the crop date, the harvest date of when that coffee was processed and, um, and packaged up 
and that gives you a timeline because coffees this is again an agricultural product and it goes through many hands goes through a process and then it's shipped goes on a container across the ocean and finally gets to us and it may be three months sometimes five months before the coffee actually reaches us for sale coffee life usually is regarded uh, fresh coffee is regarded to be maybe up to 18 months anything after that then the coffee potentially will start to dry up and um, is really something that you might consider to be an older stock or an older harvest so take a look at those dates and if it's something that let's say um, so we're in april right now so if something was harvested in november or december that's fresh coffee for us that's not anything that that's out of stock but if it's over a year from now if it's 12 to 15 months and it takes you three or four months to burn through that coffee you know, it, it could still be good coffee, but you just need to watch those dates so that you've got an idea of your timeline and how long it's going to take for you to roast that coffee. Think of it this way. I, when I order my coffee, sometimes I'm ordering bags of 20 pounds. Now, it's just for me and my family. Sometimes I share it with friends. It's going to take me a while to go through that 20 pounds. And if I have multiple bags, different bags, and then maybe not all 20 pound bags, but it's going to take me several months to go through that coffee. So I just need to be aware of the harvest date because that can play an influence on what's going to happen with the coffee later on down the road. When it starts to get a little old, it loses its liveliness. It loses some of its pizzazz. Um, just becomes a little more of a dull, duller coffee. So some of those notes that you may have hoped for and anticipated might not be there because the coffee is just getting old. One last thing to keep in mind regarding the farm and the region and where it comes from. Again, this is an agricultural product, and so there are harvest dates. There's a harvest schedule. So depending upon where you're ordering and what region you're ordering from, they may have certain schedules. Look, there's actually a harvest map that shows when the harvest seasons are in the different countries. So you should look for that and check that out because while you may be looking forward to uh, an Ethiopian coffee right now, this might not be the time to order the Ethiopian coffee. You might be kind of at the end of that tail end. They're doing the harvesting right now and it might be a few more months before you're gonna see some fresh stock come in. That might be another reason why you look at some of these sites and it just seems like, wow, they've got a lot of uh, Central American coffees right now and they don't have many of these. And that's because it's a seasonal thing. Coffees may have two or three seasons, so there's not usually too big of a lull between but um, just be aware of that. Okay, so this first point that I shared was understanding the coffee that you're ordering, the region and the farm that you're ordering it from. The second point is, is that knowing that information, that's going to help you roast this coffee, um, help you understand how it's going to roast, how it's going to be influenced by heat and air and time. Those are the elements that we use to roast coffee, and knowing the information about the bean is going to make a, a significant difference in how you set this coffee up. Let me give you a few examples. A denser coffee, it's going to be able to take heat a little bit more. I can apply more heat to this bean in the beginning than a low-density coffee. So as far as roast defects go, right, low-density low beans have a higher chance of having roast defects because they take on the heat way too quick and you've got to be a little more gentle. Um, with the low density coffees. Also the altitude, we talked about density, but as far as the flavor um, profile of that coffee, so higher density coffee with uh, floral notes and um, acidity fruitiness, that type of thing that you're looking for, or you want to bright, roast a bright coffee, then when you roast this coffee, knowing that information, you're going to handle your the time that the coffee is roasted, the amount of development, the amount of middle phase time that you apply to this coffee is going to be different than maybe a Central American coffee or a lower density coffee or an Indonesian coffee, something like that. So just be aware that the altitude can have an influence on your roasting plan. One of the things that I didn't mention with you just a minute ago when looking at the farm and the coffee information, the details, 
is the bean size. Of course, bean size is going to have an influence in how you roast that coffee as well, whether it's a pea berry or a Colombian Supremo, for example. The bean size is going to be a lot different. Maybe a, a Nicaraguan Cotura is going to be a larger bean than a Kenyan pea berry. And so you just want to be aware of the bean size when you're roasting as well or when you're planning on buying your coffee and thinking about how you're going to roast it. And then we talked about processing. Of course, we're going to want to treat a dry process coffee differently than a wash coffee. Dry process coffees tend to have shorter development times. So when you are going through your roasting process and you're deciding when to drop the coffee out of the roaster, chances are you're not going to have as long of a development time with a dry process coffee. Also, during the drying process, you're going to want to be very careful with the dry process coffees that you set this roast up because when they start to take on that heat, that color change happens quick. It seems to me it happens quicker with a dry process coffee. It's very easy to let a dry process coffee get away from you uh, and that momentum just shoots right through that middle phase with the dry process coffee. All right, let's tie all this together. So I'm getting ready to place my order, but I want to order my coffee, my green coffee beans, from a source that provides as much information about the coffee as possible. So you know where you're ordering your coffee from right now. Think about the information that's being displayed or given to you. I've been to sites where it'll give the name of a coffee and it'll give a few tasting notes. So it'll give, it'll, it'll say the region, It'll say, you know, the, the origin, the farm, and it'll talk about the tasting notes, but it doesn't really give you any more details. So that isn't really helpful to me unless I go to another source and I can find that information. So I'll just give you an example. So there's some people that are buying, some companies that are selling coffee beans. They're buying large bags from a, like a company called Cafe Imports, okay? They're a large importer. These guys will sell these large bags to the uh, company who's repackaging them. So you're on the website of a company who's repackaging coffee. And you look at that origin and that name. You can take that information and do a web search. And there's a good chance that a site like Cafe Imports will have that coffee because maybe they purchased it there. And they'll have more details about the farm over at Cafe Imports. That's going to help you know a little more about what you're getting, and that's the type of information that you want. So you may have to go to multiple sites in order to collect information. You may even need to go to the farm if they have a website. I like to go to sites that have all this information in one place. I do use Cafe Imports as an uh, educational resource and as an understanding of what's happening with harvests that are coming in, delays that are happening with coffee, and they do offer tasting notes and information. They have cupping um, uh, for some of their coffees, um, cupping information. So that's really a good source. You should check that out. But there's two companies that I really enjoy that sell coffee to home roasters. I really like these guys. The first one most of you know is Sweet Maria's, and I like them a lot because they provide so much information about the coffee. Not only do they offer information about the farm, they talk about the farmer, which is really cool. I know that Tom and the people at that company have traveled to some of these farms and they've seen some of these people and they have some of these relationships. And I really appreciate that. And it lets me know that the farmer is really benefiting from this. Whether it's fair trade or direct farm to farm purchase, the farmer uh, is the one that's putting in so much effort and it's nice to see some of these direct relationships. So Sweet Maria's has some really good information about the farmer, about the details of the coffee, and they also provide information in a flavor wheel and they also offer a cupping score. So those are things that you should look at. They've also created some really nice filters on their site. So if you just aren't sure what type of coffee you want but you know you like earthy coffees or you like sweet coffees uh, or acidic coffees, you can filter in that fashion and then um, you've got a shorter list to look at. And that's really cool. And so Sweet Maria's is a great source. And what I like about them is, is that you can buy a pound or you can buy 10 pounds. It's perfect. 
If you find a coffee you like and you want to order more of it, you might want to go to their sister company, Coffee Shrub. I think that's what it's called, Coffee Shrub. And they, uh, it's basically Sweet Maria's, but they sell, I think it's 50 pound bags or larger bags of coffee, uh, of the, some of the coffees that they sell. Not all of them, but some of them. So uh, check that out as well. The other source that I like, and I really um, appreciate these guys, it's a great place to check out. They've got some good coffee, is Royal Coffee. Now, I'm not tr just promoting these people because I'm getting anything out of it. I'm not making any money um, by talking about these. But I want to share with you why I like Royal. Uh, their coffee, I, I buy 20-pound bags from Royal. Um, I buy them... I buy their crown jewels. They're really good quality coffees. You should check them out. But what I really like about Royal is they have great educational resources. They do webinars. And now some of them are geared towards like professional roasters, roasteries, you know, that are buying large amounts of coffee. And, and that's great. But they still cater to the home roaster. And I really appreciate that. So when you go look at a particular coffee on the Royal website, they offer information about the farm, about the coffee, the details about the environment, um, the soil, the altitude, all of those great things. Then they also offer the tasting notes. They do cuppings and they provide flavor profiles. And Royal has got this really cool, what I call a tasting cloud. It's basically a bunch of words that are in a cluster, and the biggest words are the ones where those tasting notes uh, seem to be more pronounced. Uh, they'll have quite a few people do these tastings, and they all write down their experiences, and they put it into this cloud, and the more people that say there is um, like a, a blueberry or um, you know sweetness, sugar, um, caramel, whatever the, the majority, that, that word is bigger than the ones that have maybe fewer um, consensus on tasting notes, and those will be smaller words. So check out their, uh, their tasting cloud. That's really cool to see. And then the other thing that's really cool about Royal is that there's a tab called Roasting, and they have, well, it might not be called Roasting. They have uh, several different roasters that they use, types of roasting equipment that they use to roast this coffee. And they actually will give you, um, I'll call them roasting recipes. They actually share with you the temperatures, the times, uh, time for first crack, uh, how much time in development before they drop the coffee, how long it took for them to cool the coffee. All of those details are there. Even if you're not going to order coffee from them, it's a way to learn and see how other people are roasting and experiment. I mean, that's really what we're doing here. That's what you guys are doing. I'm sharing some of my experiences. I've learned a lot of these experiences from other people. And so that's what the coffee community is all about. Speaking of community, I just want to thank you guys for watching this video. I've got a little more information to share with you, but I just want to encourage you to hit the like button if you like what you've heard. That is going to tell YouTube that you guys liked it and they're going to share this video with other home coffee roasters. If you enjoy my channel, subscribe to my channel, and if you want to be first to know when new videos come out, hit that notification bell. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, one last thing, coffee storage. Now, I've talked about all of these different things, but I want to talk to you about coffee storage because it's really important. You want to be able to keep your coffee dry, and you want to keep it in as much of an airtight environment as possible. That's going to help you uh, have a little more longevity in your coffee. It's going to keep it from going stale quicker, if I can use that word stale. So how you organize and how you stash your coffee is really important. You want to make sure that you try to keep it as dry and in a, in a temperature environment that is consistent as possible. So that's an important note to remember. And last but not least, I would encourage you guys again to share your comments. I'd love to hear where you guys are getting your coffee from, what sites you like that provide great information, educational resources, and more importantly, details about the coffee. And then tell me how you plan and prepare when you place your orders. Um, how often are you placing your orders? Are you ordering once a month? Are you ordering once a year? 
I'd like to hear some of that from you. And just know that other people are reading your comments as well, so they can learn from you. So thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for being here at the Virtual Coffee Lab, and we will see you next week.